we are recording this talk. Hope that's okay with you. That's fine with me. Thanks. Okay. And uh, so, all right. I guess it's time. We can uh, start now. So, all right. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, welcome back to PC uh, seminar. And we are here in 2021, still running with our seminar. Uh, we have uh, with us uh, Professor Martian Pilichu from University of Warsaw for the first talk this year, and he'll be speaking on solving hard cut problems via flow augmentation. Thank you for joining us, Professor. Over to you now. Thank you very much. Thank you for the introduction, and I welcome you all here. Uh, so I'm going to speak about solving hard problems via flow augmentation. Uh, so this is another a different talk that I gave at this school. So there was a like online school during the over the Christmas break by, made by the same organizers. And then I also gave a talk with, I think the same title, but on that talk, I was really focusing on just the flow augmentation technique and without any applications like far reaching applications, but just on the flow augmentation technique, I was focusing on like showing how the guts of this technique up there. And this is a different talk. Here, I will very quickly go, go over the flow augmentation technique, but I will try to focus on the background feature, why we looked into it, what's the more far reaching applications of this technique, and what's like the big picture behind this technique. Okay, so that's like the main goal here. So this is a different talk than the one that was, this is a significantly different talk. I was a conscious attempt at making this as disjoint as possible between the, the previous talk, just to focus on a different aspect of this paper. So this is joint work with Andrew Kim, Stefan Krench, and Mar Magnus Wallström. I have seen Magnus in the room here. I'm not sure what he's trying to learn here today, but hello, Magnus, nice to see you. And yeah, so this talk was originally supposed to be before Christmas, but then there was a lot of things happening before Christmas, including IPEX, so we shifted it here. So yeah, I'm happy to start the new year with some nice talk. Okay, so what we are going like at the first glance, we're going to discuss some new techniques to, to make a FPT algorithm for uh, undirected cut problems. This will be unfortunately undirected. I will talk a lot about directed graphs actually today, but the main all results will be for undirected graphs. And this result will be working, I mean, this cut, this is one of the techniques that will work look like for some cuts that are not extremal cuts. So if you think about important separators technique, which is like the technique you learn at many, you learn probably at some FPT course in your life, then this is really about like understanding extremal cuts in some sense. And sometimes when the problem looks at some non-external cuts, the important separators framework starts to break down and doesn't work for that. So that's one of the things we want to mitigate here. And we want to look at, be aware of many cuts, not only the external ones. And the important thing is that the main corollary of our result, and this is the thing I will be focusing on today, is that we can solve one problem that was open, its FPT status was open for a while, and the problem will be very weird. I mean, I, when I will define the problem, you will probably, what, why this guy is thinking about this such a strange problem? But I will try to give, convince you that this is actually an important pro the, a very important problem, and it turned out that it was the last the last problem for some dichotomy or trichotomy that we are we are aiming for. So this, like, in a sense, the technique I want to show you was the last missing technique to get some actual trichotomy in some you know, of some uh, CSP problems. So yeah, so in some sense, I want to say that the, te the algorithm technique we showed you was in some sense the missing techniques for some definition of what we were we looking for and what will be missing up there. Okay, and unfortunately, it's undirected graphs. I will be say speaking a lot of, about directed graphs just to highlight that we conjecture that the similar things may be actually true or may be actually possibly in directed graphs, uh, but we don't know how to do it. And I think this is a very interesting open problem. So that's the very general plan or very high level view of what I'm going to tell you today. So um, what are cut problems? I mean, we'll be doing some cut. I mean, we're doing some cuts of graphs. So these are generally problems where we are asking to separate something, but we want to think in more general fashion. So for example, we want to include, I don't know, some transversal problems as the cut problem. So generally the problem where the solution is some union of cuts and you want to cut a lot of things from each other or cut some cycles or cut some other things in a very general fashion. These are cut problems that we want to look at. And this was a very vivid and very flourishing area in the last decade or decade and a half in parameterized complexity. 
Uh, so let's look at a few examples. Well, the thing that you learn at some basic or slightly more advanced algorithm course, not in NFPT, is like the problem of minimum cut, like the minimum cut or minimum weight or maximum flow, this like maximum flow minimum cut problem, which is a polynomial time solvable. But then you can separate more than two terminals from each other, and this becomes anti hard. This is multi way cut problem, which is one of the mo most basic applications of the important separators technique to get an FPT algorithm for this problem. But there's also like the more general thing when you have there are some terminal pairs you want to separate from called multi-cut. Uh, and but we also want to include some problems which are not really separating some terminals from each other, but they're about cutting some objects in the graph like cycles. So for example, the feedback vertex problem. And yeah, so the cut problems were very extensively studied in the last probably 15 years in parameterized complexity. And we have got a lot of techniques. So it turns out that many of these problems are actually tractable, but this quite, it requires quite a lot of work to get an FPT algorithm for them. Okay, so that's like what the outcome. So after the, this decade and a half of work, we have got quite a rich toolbox uh, to work from. And one, the starting point of this whole area was the definition of important separators. And uh, there's just somehow like which, can be called as a greedy method. Like we, we want to find the separator that grabs as much as possible on one side of the cut. And together with the usage of this framework as uh, of important separators as shadow removal, this led to a lot of tractability results, including multi-cut, including the direct directed multi-way cut. And this is a great technique that also works in directed graphs. So this is something that can be ported to directed graphs. It changes only slightly in directed graphs. And yeah, so this is, um, and something that works nice in directed graphs, but this in some sense, it looks only at structure of the external cuts. So whenever you're looking for some cuts or does not like pushed away in one of the directions, you cannot assume that the cut is pushed away in any of the directions, it doesn't work really. So this has got limited applicability. So then there was a very nice work a few years ago by Marcus and company uh, that showed that actually like there is a very good structure of all cuts of bounded size in undirected graphs. So this is very undirected. And this is where you say that all cuts in undirected graphs lives in a sort of sub, it's not a subgraph, but it's a part of the graph that has got bounded truth. And for this reason, a lot of things are tractable. Then uh, quite related technique was recursive understanding and randomized contractions. Uh, and this, this is actually quite related to truth reduction. This is like a more like faster way of understanding small cuts in undirected graphs, the structure of all small cuts in undirected graphs. And a lot of problems got solved by this way. And there's also another line of research, which is a bit different, which is uh, about uh, LP relaxation. So it turns out that for some of the problems, a very specific set of problems, but not that, I mean, quite rich set of problems, there actually, there's a good notion of either linear programming relaxation or some submodular relaxation that actually guiding branching algorithm by the relaxation gives a surprisingly fast and efficient FPT algorithm. And so these are like the, the, the techniques we got, I mean, the main techniques we got in the undirected graphs or we got in the last decade, but only the first one really works in the directed graphs works and the other ones are really very undirected. So these are really undirected ones. Really undirected ones. And now this was a rich toolbox, but it turns out that it was somewhat insufficient for some of the applications. So we had some problems where in some sense we thought that we're missing still something. We still don't understand that something we still miss, miss. And one of the problems that was like, you know, I think I, this is a really very natural problem that's listed here, let me discuss in a moment. But this is the problem when, when the toolbox so far felt a bit unsatisfactory. So this is the problem, which is essentially a mean cut problem, but the mean cut with two objectives. So if you've got S and T in a graph and you want to cut these guys away and you have got two budgets, okay? Your first budget is an integer K, which means that you, you can cut at most K edges. You can cut at most K edges, but also edges in the graph has some weights and you want the total weights of cut edges to be bounded by some W, okay? So you have got two constraints on how your cut or budget of your cut, you've got two budgets. One is the cardinality budget, which is also your parameter here. You want to think of like the number of edges of the cut as a parameter, but also edges have weights and you don't want to accept the total weight uh, budget you have got for your cut, okay? So this is a problem. And this problem is anti-hard. I mean, uh, and it's not that difficult to prove that it's anti-hard, but the main problem is that it's actually quite 
tricky to prove it's FPT in K because these real numbers, I mean, they make the problem very strange because these are like these numbers, these weights are just real positive real, reals. So they can be very complicated reals and you cannot do much combinatorics on them. So all this important separators business, they just doesn't work, it goes haywire with these weights here. So it's actually quite complicated to, the, to get FPT in K algorithm for this problem. It's actually possible, but you need to like understand all like you need to understand how to port all this records of understanding or truth reduction technique and like go over all this techniques. It's actually quite complicated. I mean, quite tech complicated on details to work with, and you can hammer it down with that one. But because this technique is only undirected, it doesn't work for directed graphs, and we say no good reason. I mean, we don't cannot prove the W hardness. It seems. I mean, I. I'm strongly convinced this problem should be FPT in directed graphs as well, but we don't know how to do it. It's actually open whether this problem is FPT. And I think this is an excellent problem. I mean, I feel like uh, it's a bit embarrassing. It's still open, but we really, it feels very natural to me, but we really don't know how, it, how to prove it, in, uh, how to make an FPT algorithm in, in directed graphs, because in undirected graphs, the only thing we knew so far up to the thing I will be talking about is actually to apply some complicated machinery that understands all the undirected casts of small size and like do some dynamic programming over some strange decomposition to actually understand them all. Okay, so this is the problem that uh, this problem felt like um, the undirected solution feels unsatisfactory and the fact that the directed one is open is even more insat not satisfactory. Okay, so this is this one, but let's look at another example. And this is the example that I think you will be uh, saying that, I mean, what's this nonsense problem here on this on the slide, but let me go over it. So I have got a graph and again, I'm looking for, I will be looking for an ST cut. So there's like an S and T and I want to cut them from each other. But like the way how I cut is actually quite complicated. Okay. So there are some edges that I just can cut and they cost one to cut, but some edges are paired. So there are sometimes some edges are paired. So some edges are just standalone edges, but some edges are paired into pairs. And then you can pay one to delete the entire pair. Okay, so I can pay one, pay one to delete both edges of a pair. But there's one caveat. And the caveat is that this is the formal definition, but the caveat is let me just draw it again, S and T. So there are some pairs of edges, they're paired to each other. Okay. And the point is that okay, I can cut, so I can use a different color and I can cut for a pair. So like both edges are cut from a pair, and I pay only one but cut to edges. But the caveat is that if there's a pair that I don't cut, I cannot leave both edges on the reachable from S side. Okay, this sounds very strange, but let me draw another picture. So let me wipe out this one and draw it another. So if there's a pair, sorry, if there's actually a pair up there that, that these guys are paired with each other, then actually my cut cannot look like that so that both these guys are reachable from S after the removal of the solution, okay? So let me just repeat it. I have got a graph, a graph, an unaddicted graph, and I want to separate things from, things from source using budget K, but the cost function is slightly weird. I mean, some edges are paired and I, need, I can pay one to, cut, to delete both the edges from a pair, but the caveat is that if two edges are paired, I cannot, if I don't cut them, I cannot leave them both on the reachable from S side. Okay, so I cannot, um, I mean, that's like the constraint I have here. Okay, that seems like quite weird. I mean, uh, why would you on earth think about such a strange constraint on the cuts? But there's actually a very good story behind it. And let me try to present you with this story. Okay. Uh, so, and by the way, it was open up to this paper of this problem is FPT in K. You may at this moment don't really care about whether it's FPT in K, but I hope you will care about it in a few slides. And yeah, why do we care about this problem? Okay. So let us try to change the language. So graphs are very nice. Graphs are like cute and I love graph problems, but sometimes some things are very hard to express as graphs. So sometimes it makes sense to look into some much more general picture or like general picture. So let's try to translate the mean cut problem. So the polynomial time solvable minimum cut problem under an unweighted setting, just cut k edges to separate s from t, just translate it into, uh, into a CSP language, constraint satisfaction problem language. So, so I don't want to define now, have a huge slide with what's a CSP because this side slide is unreadable, but let me try to like change the language so far. So I have got a graph G, sink and source, and an integer k, 
and I want to like delete at most k address to separate s from t. Okay, so how can I phrase it? I can make a variable for every vertex of the graph. Think of this variable as an indicator whether this graph is on the s side, on, whether this vertex is on the s side or on the t side of the cap. Okay, so these are variables. They are just Boolean variables. Think s side or t side, but this will be zero ones. And uh, an edge means that these two guys are on the same side of the cut, yeah? The edge means I, these two guys want to be on the same side or pay one to cut this edge and make them on this other side of the cut, okay? And you want S to be on one side of the cut and T to be the other side of the cut. So if you want to be consistent with like this, the typical definition of Boolean, Boolean notion of like that the domain is zero and ones, think that S is on the one side. So S is the capital of the truth kingdom and T is the capital of the false kingdom, okay? So there's actually a constraint saying that, okay, S is one, uh, the variable S one says I'm on the one side and T is on, I'm on the zero side of the cut, okay? So there's our separate sides of the cut. And what do we really want? We want to partition these guys into like the one side and the T side so that S gets on the one side, T gets on the zero side. You know? So there's one side and zero side and such that the number of edges cut is minimum and edges are now unsatisfied constraints. So think this is a constraint saying these two guys want to be on the same side and some of them will be not satisfied and you want to minimize the number of unsatisfied constraints. Okay, so you want to here if you have got threshold k, you want to not to satisfy k constraints. So what I did here is nothing really deep on the communal things. I'm just rephrased the minimum cut problem as like a problem of finding an assignment. So like every vertex now becomes a variable that c zero or one, like I'm on the zero side of the cut or one of the sides of the cut that forces S to be on the one side and T to be on the zero side and tries to minimize the number of edges that are unsatisfied. Every edge now becomes a constraint saying these two variables want to have the same value and they want to satisfy, unsatisfy as little constraints as possible. So this is like a translation of the problem, but this seems actually quite, I mean, this seems like actually quite useful. So it actually says, so it actually says that if you think of like Boolean variables, so you have got Boolean variables and your, the Boolean variable, and you have got like, you can say the following things. You can say this variable is zero, this variable is one. Yeah, this is like, this variable is zero, this variable is one. And you can say these two variables are equal. So you can put this type of constraints into your instance. Yeah, this is zero, this is one, or these two guys are equal. Then actually in this way, you, I can express exactly the minimum edge cut between two vertices. Yeah, this is really like your if you have your variables and you put all your constraints, then your, your equality variables are edges. Your there's a special vertex zero, a special vertex one. Your equal to zero constraint is an edge to the zero. Your equal one is equal to the one, and you want to have a minimum cut between zero and one in this graph, this constructed graph. So what I really said is that minimum cut problem is really the same as like minimum unsatisfiable problem or like max satisfiable problem. Like how can you minimum number of constraints that you can don't satisfy, uh, that you don't satisfy problem. When you can say, when you co allowed constraints are, this is zero, this is one, or these two are equal, okay? And this is like the typical setting of the construct satisfaction problems when you're actually saying as a part of the problem definition, which constraints are allowed, yeah? Whether, I mean, what, what can you say about that? Like, which constraints are allowed, right? Here, equal zero, equal one, or equal to each other are the allowed constraints. And you're asking in this context, can I delete at most kind constraints to make the instance satisfiable? Can I make an assignment that violates at most k uh, constraints? Okay, so this is like what we are going to say. So now there's another question, okay. Okay, this is the simplest gamma that expresses mean cut and the problem becomes polynomial time solvable actually by a quite non-trivial reason, like mean cut max flow theorem is quite a non-trivial reason why this problem is polynomial time solvable, but it is. But now you can ask, okay, when else it is polynomial time solvable? So this is the question that we don't want to answer because the guys in the CSP work worked it and solved this problem and this is not our world, we're FPT people. But also you can ask the question, hey, when this problem is FPT in K, okay? When this problem is parameterized by FPT in K, because I mean, maybe sometimes it's NP hard, but still FPT in K and maybe sometimes it's W on hard, okay? So this is the problem, the question we want to ask. I mean, which, what different constraints you can actually add here what different type of constraints you want to allow and still keep the problem tractable. And here tractable, we mean FPT in K, okay? 
So this is here. And now if you think about this, the coupled mean cut is actually a problem where we are allowing this equality. These are single edges. So we are allowing the zeros and ones because we want to have two things S and T to cut from each other. But we also have got this coupled per edges. Yeah, there are these coupled edges. And this coupled edges, what does it mean a coupled edge? Well, either you cut it and you just delete this constraint, or it says, OK, these guys are on the same side because it's an edge. These guys are on the same side because it's an edge. And also, you cannot put, if you cannot both put both these edges on the S side. And remember that in this thing, we think of S being on the one side. So actually, it corresponds to this constraint. Yeah, This is a constraint saying, OK, the first two arguments are equal. The second two are, the third and fourth argument are equal. And actually, we don't allow all ones. All ones are bad. We don't like all ones. Yeah, So you can actually think, OK, this is a constraint with four array. So it accepts four variables. So there are like 16 assignments. So there are two to the 16 different constraints here. And this is one of them maybe not the first one you would think about for our refer constraints, but there are not that many super natural for our constraints. And this is one of them, OK? So this coupled mean cut is actually like comes from a CSP language. So it comes from the CSP language, where uh, actually, OK, let's look at this for our constraint. And this the graph interpretation of this constraint is that there are coupled edges that you pay one to delete, but you cannot leave them both on the reachable from S side. But it's like one of the constraints that's like, yeah. You, you want the first two arguments to be equal, the third and fourth to be equal, but you don't like on all ones. All ones are bad. Okay. And the question now becomes I mean, the coupled mean cut question becomes whether this mean cut problem, I mean, whether can you delete k constraints to get a satisfiable instance, whether this, const, this instance is um, satisfiable, uh, can you delete k guys to get a successful instance with this language? So the allowed constraints are this ones and this one strange one. So yeah, so let's look at the picture. It's maybe not like to say picture, but let's wrap it up. So we have got this mean cut that I expressed, which is like the mean set problem, this unsatisfy as little as possible problem with this probably the simplest language you can uh, you can think of, the simplest interesting language you can think of. Then there's this coupled mean cut that adds this strange relation, and the strange relation. OK, we don't know whether it's FPT or not, but this seems strange. But probably most of you would agree that the more natural thing is to actually wipe out the last one. Like, hey, what's the complexity of the problem if you actually, what's the complexity of the problem if you actually, like, OK, you allow coupling edges. So there are edges coupled in pairs, and you can pay one to lead both edges from the from a, from a couple, OK? So there's some coupling of edges. and But you don't require that if you don't cut the edges, they cannot be both on the S side of the cut. OK, and this is actually a question. OK, this is a natural question. So people already answered it. And there's actually, yeah, so this is this question. And um, yeah, so I put here, this is actually a question answered by Marx and Rasgon more than a decade ago. That actually, this problem becomes the one hard. So if you have got this extra, con so you can couple edges and say you pay one to delete both edges, this problem becomes the one hard. And there's actually a simple reduction. Let me show it on the next slide. Uh, that actually, yeah, so this is difficult. And yeah, so the reduction is quite simple. Let me go over it. As usual, we'll be doing W1 hardness reduction for the multicolored click problem. So we have the K color classes and the graph, multi K partite graph between them. And you want to find the click picking one vertex from each color class. So this is the multicolored click. And the picture is the following. So you are really, you want to express K color, K click as a uh, you want to express this k click as this mean set, so this cup, this double equality. I put this r prime from the previous slide here as double equality here. So you want to have this mean cut from s to t, but you can couple edges so that you pay one to delete each pair. Okay, and the idea is as follows. The idea is very simple. So you put s on top and t on the bottom, and you make essentially you may you arrange all the color classes in, into line. OK, and then there's actually for every, let's look at two color classes, VI and VJ. And you want to say that you choose some vertex from VI and you choose some vertex from VJ, but you only allow the guys that are connected by an edge. OK, and the idea is that, OK, so between V, so let's make a path 
from S to T going through V1, V2, V3, V4, up to Vn in one color class, in color class Vi. Uh, but between V1 and V2, let's make edges, let's make edges for every edge incident with V1. So for every edge between Vi and Vj, there's an edge like from V1 to V2. So there's like an edge assigned to every edge between Vi and Vj. Okay, and the same happens between V1 and V2 here, V2 and V3 here inside Vj, and this edge is corresponding to the same edge of the original graph I coupled with each other. Okay, so this is like, uh, maybe let me go to the next slide. So that's uh, the next picture because that's the most interesting. So like, think of Vi, look at Vi and arrange all the vertices in Vi in some order. And then for every other Vj, okay, make a path that starts from S, goes between all these guys from V1, V2, up to Vt, and between consecutive Vs, it makes quite a long path where all the edges on this path corresponds to some edges between Vi and Vj, okay? And the same happens in the Vj, and the edges that correspond to the same edge of the original graph are coupled with each other. So that what you can do here, I mean, for every Vi and Vj, there's this path in Vi and there's this path in Vj that you need to cut somewhere. And the point is that because you add, you allow only k to budget, you need, I mean, and there are k to two pairs Vi, Vj, you need to cut, you need to cut a, a pair. So you need to cut a pair. So you need to cut something that is coupled with each other. And you need to synchronize in between the choices because now you have got this Vj, but maybe somewhere else there's some Vj prime. And these paths for Vj and Vj prime, they share these vertices V1, V3, V4, etc. So this coupling needs to happen in be between the same V, V something, between the same Vs, because otherwise they will be like, you can go from S to T by going first over one path and then going by the other path. So you need to cut these guys like around the same, between the same Vs here. So that one must be a bit sketchy for maybe some of you, but I mean, there's quite a simple reduction that actually like, this coupling of edges makes the problem very quickly W and hard. And this is like, I mean, because there's some extra connotation with the graph that's, I mean, yeah, it's actually quite easy to get W and hardness here. Okay, so this is, uh, yes, this is W and hardness. And this is something we knew for at least a decade. But the problem is that, okay, so we have got this picture uh, that, so we have got this picture that this one is polynomial time solvable. This one is W1 hard. And this one we didn't know up to very recently. So in sense, now this problem, this coupled mean cut, this double equality with this extra extra constraint that these two guys are not on the uh, are not on the S side becomes something like between something we know that's hard and something we know it's easy. Okay, and that's why it was really interesting because that was the problem that looked like, okay, we don't really know whether it's NP hard or not. And uh, whether it's W1 hard or FPT in K, it is NP hard, but uh, yeah, so we don't know. And um, we didn't know. And that, that made the problem interesting because it seems, okay, this is the guy in the, in the gray zone. This is the guy we don't know. So we would like to know the boundary for which gamma the problem is FPT and for which gamma the problem is W1 hard. And it was a problem that sounded like the next step of naturality after double equality that actually we don't know what to do. And the problem was that the more interesting part was that all these three reduction problems and like these techniques for under graphs, which turns out to be quite powerful in any context, they seem, to, seem not to work here. So we didn't know how to solve this problem with the three reduction and the um, three reduction and or randomized contractions. So that was like open for a while. Another reason, yeah. So we ask here what's the boundary retractability. The other side reason was that, he, uh, I mean, most of you, a uh, big part of you don't remember, but I mean, when I was starting working in FPT, uh, there was this very, very big open problem whether multicat is FPT. And when I was a PhD student, it got resolved by two groups, there was Marx and Rasgon paper, and there was like the French group, uh, the French group paper that solves FPT, multi the multicat problem proved that undirected multicat is FPT. And the Marx and Rasgon paper, they started with some massaging 
we found, I mean, it was quite complex massaging, but it wasn't, it didn't involve any heavy machinery. It was like by hand mas massaging. It's multicut. The problem that they called bipedal multicut compression. It doesn't really matter now what's the exact definition of this problem, but this was one of the, this was like a special variant of multicut. So the general multicut was massaged by direct compression, some branching into like bipedal version of it with compression. Okay, so this is like what the problem up there. And the point is that in this, this Marks and Rosman paper, there's a lot of very nice ideas to actually solve this bipedal compression variant. Yeah? So massaging into this part is non-trivial, but it's like an in introductory step. And then all the, the, all the best ideas are actually to punch down the bipedal case, okay? And the whole shadow removal technique that was introduced in this paper that's actually developed to sol solve the bipedal part, okay? And what, with the uh, like our upper prevention for the coupled mean cut is that actually mm, this problem is the coupled mean cut is more difficult than by bipedal. So actually by doing a bit more massaging on the bipedal thing, you can actually reduce it to the coupled mean cut. So we're actually solving a problem that's more difficult than bipedal multicut compression. It covers bipedal multi-compression. Already in 2013, it was actually quite an ingenious piece of work of Mark and Srasgon to get this bipedal things solved by shadow removal, by introducing shadow removal and by solving it by shadow removal. So in this way, we are solving some, um, so our additional motivation was to actually find a different algorithm for multicut, uh, for this bipedal version, which is like the essence of the multicut. Uh, and we have a better explanation than just doing shadow removal what Marx and Rusko did. So that was like the second motivation for this problem. There's actually a more general problem than this bipedal, the essence of the multicut problem. Okay. So our main algorithmic result is that actually this coupled mean cut and some technical generalization of it that I don't want to say here because it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense to, uh, okay. Uh, it doesn't make sense to, um, to use it, but uh, to, to say it to you, but uh, yeah. So yes, but this is our main result. And what we, why we did, why I said at the very beginning that this is like the essence or the, no, the missing technique. Why I said that this is the missing technique of the, um, of the, um, uh, uh, of this indirect cut problems is that we actually got this following uh, trichotomy in the end. Okay, so I said to you that actually our goal at the beginning was to say that for any gamma, we want to know whether like satisfying everybody by k, k constraints is FPT or W1 hard. Okay, so this is like a dichotomy. I mean, we won't have a theorem. This is gamma, this gamma, so W1 hard, this gamma, so FPT. Okay, but we got the trichotomy and this trichotomy is like, okay, let me put it all. Either this is uh, W1 hard and this W1 hard is actually turned out that there's really like, a, 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 there's a single reason for W1 hardness, like all W1 hard problems are the problem are the languages that actually actually contain the W equality or can implement W equality by some gadget ring. So actually like this things that I showed you in sketchy way was actually the only W1 hardness in this area up here, or actually all the FPT things uh, actually is FPT and a number of FPT things were known. And it turns out that the, everything that was unknown. So, so far before this paper, the W equality lower bound was known and like gadgeting is known. I mean, there's some gadgeting around it to make other problems. There was a number of PT results for some problems. It turned out that the entire gray zone that was remaining was actually the gray zone that uh, that was covered by this generalized coupled mean cut. That actually our last technique was actually an explanation that the entire gray zone moved to the tractability area by uh, by doing by proving the FPT result for generalized coupled mean cut. But okay, this is like this. But there's like this first bullet here which says that we have got the third case in our trichotomy, it means that actually there are some languages, like if you have got a clause like U implies V, okay? If you have got a clause U implies V, then you actually implement a minimum cut in the directed graphs, yeah? Because if you have got this things in the language, you have got zeros and ones, then this really implements a minimum cut in the same way that the equality implements undirected minimum cut, in the same way this things implements directed minimum cut. Okay, 
And the point is that in directed graphs, if you allow this once, then sudden, then you, you encounter a lot of open problems that we don't know how to solve. So what this trichotomy really says is that for any language gamma, either this thing um, implements double equality and it's doubly one hard by the simple reduction I showed you, or this thing uh, is captured by known tractable results or the new tractable results for coupled mean cut, it's coupled mean cut or a general one, or this guy actually contains directed cut problem. And then in this directed cut problems, there are a lot of open FPT problems. There are a number of open FPT problems that we don't know how to touch and we don't start investigating them yet. So this is like, so this theorem says, hey, the only remaining open cases are among directed graphs or directed like things that can be expressed as directed graphs in these things or the undirected ones are already solved at least in the CSP regime. Okay, so like it says that for the undirected graphs and in the CSP regime, the only missing technique was this coupled mean cut, or the only missing tractability result was the coupled mean cut. Everything is solved, go to directed graphs. And what I say that in directed graphs, a lot of things are opened. Well, uh, yeah, that's things. Let, because there's something that was actually pointed out by some another paper a few years ago. I don't remember the author's now, so I don't want to mention it. And, but, uh, but, uh, yeah, but I, want to, I don't want to mention it, but uh, yeah. So there's uh, this is a free chain set problem where you are allowing the following thing. So this thing is really, you think in directed setting as a path on free edges as a path on three edges that you can delete all the edges for cost one. So deleting all three edges, paying one to delete all three edges, but these are like, this is a path. This is not a coupled edges or something like that that can fire away being the graph. This is like a free edge path that you can delete all three edges by paying one at the same time, or just stay intact. But then, I mean, and then you need to separate S from T when S you think as one and T you think as zero. Okay, so this is really the, um, Mm, this is the free chain sand problem. Uh, this, there's like a variant of L chain sand when this like this line is longer. Like they're like in L chain sand, there are like L plus one variables here. And well, and it's open whether the uh, for the free chain sand problem is open whether this means that problem like delete k constraints to get a satisfiable instance whether it's FPT. And it's open for a while, and we really don't know how to do it. I mean, it's just like very resistant to all our attacks, and it's really a cut, directed cut problem that we don't know how to solve. So uh, yeah, so the message is that for directed graphs, first prove that free chain set is FPT. I think it's FPT after a long while, but I mean, I may be wrong, but my conjecture is that it's FPT, but we really don't know how to solve all these problems. Yeah, so yeah, there's a lot of directed cut problems that are still open. So our goal was to actually resolve on the un all the undirected cut problems. Uh, and the trichotomy says that there are no more undirected cut problems left, at least the ones that can be casted as this CSP framework of separating zeros and ones with some strange constraints on the cuts, on the cuts there. Okay, so this is there. So let's go back to the bioobjective cut that I started from. So that was this problem of finding a cut and there, but there's both the cardinality bound and the weight bound up there and the weight bound. And yeah, so, and this was not hard and we needed to work a lot to make it FPT uh, in undirected graphs and we didn't know what to do with directed graphs. And let us make one observation. Assume that this K is like the minimum cardinality we can hope for. So assume that K, uh, this is this assumption here, that K equals the size of the maximum flow between S and T. Yeah, so actually you have got S and T and there are actually K flow paths between S and T, and you, your solution is to cut one of the each flow paths exactly one. Okay, so actually, like this K is doesn't really say that you want to cut at most K edges. It wants to say that hey, find a mean cut that has got minimum weight. Okay, and this is actually an easy problem because I mean you just take a new weight, which is the old weight plus some super large constant, much much larger than everything you have in your graph or just your budget here is also fine, but think of this as a huge number here. And like, just look at the mean cut of weight, like K times this huge constant plus the original budget. 
and you can co actually use the same huge constant and your original budget at the same number. So this actually boils down to like asking whether there's something of weight k plus one times your original weight budget, but every edge contains co costs your weight plus this plus. And now the point is that because you cannot find a smaller cardinality cut, you need to use k edges. You need to use k edges, and then you pay k times w for just the edges you used, and then on top of it, this extra weights here you pay. Uh, so you cannot use more than you cannot use. You don't have budget to use more than k edges up there. You can't. You don't have budget to use more than k edges. Uh, so you will use k edges, and this like this k this plus one part will take care of the fact that you don't your total weights, your original weights don't sum up to more than w. Okay. So if your instance is a special case where your graph is actually uh, is your instance is a special case where the lamp that you are really asking to find the minimum cardinality cut with extra weight budget uh, on top of it weight constraint then this problem becomes polynomial so probably by just applying mean cost max slope to specially constructed weights here okay uh, but this reduction is very sensitive to this assumption that you are looking for a minimum cardinality cut here, and it doesn't work if you are allowed to have got something slightly larger than a minimum cardinality cut, and we want to mitigate it. So what do we want? To, I mean, our the idea here is to actually, hey, let's try to do something with the graph to actually pump up the size of the flow, okay? Because if you think about it, there's S and T, and if k is larger than lambda, and you're looking for some cut of size k, which in this case can be an inclusion-wise minimal cut, then you should be able, I mean, in technically speaking, you could add some pink edges to the graph somewhere here and somewhere here, okay, so that the flow increases, but this thing stays a cut, yeah? So I want to pump up the flow. I want to to like break all minimum cuts. You want to, inc I want to increase the flow from S to T, but don't break my solution. Keep my solution uh, intact, okay? And this is the tech, uh, combinatorial, uh, the algorithmic essence of what we proved. This is the statement we proved that there's actually, there's a randomized algorithm. Of course, I mean, you don't know the solution. So you need to, I mean, you need to do some branching or randomized choices. So think randomized choices. So there's a randomized algorithm that works in polynomial time, or actually like near linear time, like poly k times linear in the graph size that takes your graph. There's S and T, okay? Okay, let me just use the same colors as previously. So there's S and T, there's some graph between them, okay? And there is some unknown cut. This, there's some unknown cut Z, and this is a minimal cut, inclusion-wise minimal cut of size at most K between them. And what I want to do is that I want to add, take a pink color or violet color and add some edges to the graph. Okay. Add some edges to the graph such that the flow increases to K. So the flow increases to K, but the cut remains a cut. Uh, so I want to add edges. On one hand, I don't want to add an edge between the two sides of the cut so that I break the cut. But on the other hand, I want to add enough edges on both sides of the cut so that the flow, this guy becomes a mini cut. So that the, there's like, you can actually take K flow paths, reach the red cut, and this K paths can reach T later, okay? And our main technical thing, which I spoke a lot in during in the December talk, was that actually you can actually do it. And uh, success probability is, I mean, you need some exponential thing because we are solving empty hard problems in the end. So there's like inverse exponential in K success probability that you actually won't break the cut. So you always increase the flow, but you sometimes break the cut you want to break. So there's like this, you think as color coding yeah, with some probability you're failing or with some small probability, but one in F of K probability you're succeeding. And yeah, you are, and this is it. So yeah, so this is the solution. The one thing I want to point out is that the running time bound is linear in the graph size and polynomial in K. So if you use this one, you can some ho hope to get a linear time FPT algorithm. So like, it's not like a randomized contractions, get some like cubic term in the running time bound because of the flows and things that happening there. So this is actually a method that I can actually like, it's, there's still hope to get a linear time algorithm, in the FPT algorithm in the end. So that's a side remark about this thing. Okay, so okay, so let me solve this problem by by objective ST cut here. So yeah, so what can we we have got this cut? So just let's go back to the blue color and there's S and T, and we wanted to look for this cut. 
And we said that if this cut is a mean cut between S and T, minimum cardinality cut between S and T, then the problem is simple, okay? So now we can apply our flow augmentation lemma from the previous slide to add some violet edges to the graph that will increase the flow to K, that will increase the flow to the size of the, to the, size of the cut we are looking for, okay? And okay, once it, if it succeeded and increases the flow and but didn't break the solution, then the routine for when k equals lambda will actually find us the solution. And the success probability is like one in one over two to the k log k. So once we repeat it two to the k log k times, we get the constant success probability that in one of the iterations we will actually not break our solution. We'll actually find it by using subroutine for k equal lambda. Okay, so this is uh, yeah. So this is the um, uh, the thing. So this problem, once we get the theorem from previous slide, this problem becomes like very simple. It's like two-liner here. Yeah, you have got the flow augmentation technique, and now we just apply it and use the simple algorithm for the like minimum cut, minimum cardinality cut case up there. So this is the thing that we uh, yeah, and this is like way more satisfactory way of solving this problem than applying all the re recursive understanding randomized contraction things, which is actually quite complicated and requires super poly super linear time in the writing time bound, and also re super linear in the graph size, and also requires quite a complicated dynamic programming algorithm at the end to actually go over the three decomposition constructed there and, and find some stuff. So this is actually a satisfactory answer to this problem. And also with the coupled mean cut, I mean, oh, so I wanted to draw here something. So if you think about coupled mean cut and assume that additionally, assume that your solution is a mean cut. So what does it mean? So there's actually S and, uh, let me go to the previous course thing. There's actually S and T and you're cutting some edges. Uh, so this is a solution, yeah? You're cutting some edges and you're also cutting some coupled edges. You're cutting some coupled edges. So this is the solution, okay? But there's actually a maximum flow that actually like makes the red thing a minimum cut. Okay, so there's actually some flow with the graph like that. Okay. Yeah. Then I want to say that this problem now becomes polynomial time solvable or FPT. Let, let me go with this. So I want to say that coupled mean cut becomes easier when you have got this assumption that your solution is actually the edges you cut in the solution is actually minimum cut. It's actually mean cut. Let us see. Let us see us. Let us see it. So first, assume that there's actually some other couple green coupled edges here. Okay. So there's actually. So look, with the blue is a minimum. It's a maximum flow. This is something we can compute. So we we don't see the red solution, but we see the blue minimum maximum flow. We see the blue maximum flow, and we can actually guess. So it's an FPT algorithm that these two things, uh, that these two flow paths contain single edges. This two flow paths contains coupled things, and this two flow paths contains coupled things. Okay, we can guess it. And now I want to look if there's another coupled thing here. Like, like so, say there's this red, there's this red coupled thing here, and there's this green coupled thing here. That I want to say that you will never take this guy into the solution. You will never take this guy into the solution because if you take this guy to the solution, and this is the solution that really cuts one edge here, one edge here, one edge here, one edge here, one edge, and the flow path then this entire area here, this entire area is reachable from S. So this pair of edges here, this red pair of edges is reachable from S, which violates our assumption, okay? Which violates our assumption that on, in, a cup, in a coupled edges, you cannot, mm, in a coupled edges, you cannot have both edges on the S side if you don't cut them, okay? So in this sense, you will never take this green guy in the solution, so you can actually drop this construct. I mean, you can make these edges like undeletable edges or just contract them or like discard this construct. You, this construct becomes undeletable. You won't cut these edges up there, okay? So end up with this picture by doing this reduction, let me go through all green guys, that this red is our solution, but other coupled edges are like skewed with it. They're never like nested after one after each other, they're skewed in. So these are like other, other options. These are other other options to cut. Yeah, they're like like maybe just drawing it once again, like drawing a special zoom zooming picture here. This is an T, and all the options to cut on this flow paths are like nested. This is coupled with this one. This is coupled with this one. This is coupled with this one. This is coupled with this one, etc. This is coupled with this one. Okay, so this is like how it really looks like. So 
you should think of it as now we go to another very different CSP thing, but you think of this ones as being like one big variable, like a slider, yeah? If you cut this edge, you cut this edge. If you cut this edge, you cut this edge. So in a sense, this is like a slider going on the, on the, top, on the top path where you cut us from T, and on the bottom thing, there's like a corresponding slider, actually the same slider going in the other direction. Okay, so if you go back to the previous picture, this is like one slider that goes in one direction, one path, and the other direction, the other path. This is slider that goes here, and there's like you cut one edge here and what kind of one edge here. So you think of this instance actually being like four sliders that you need to decide where to cut. So you need to cut this path somewhere, this path somewhere, this couple of paths somewhere, and this couple of paths somewhere. And this in a couple of paths, the sliders go like in opposite directions. And there are some extra things because in this instance, there may be some gray edges that you're not allowed to cut because they're not on the flow paths, but they connect some things. There may be some like connections observed because the flow path is not the entire graph. There's some connection like that. And what does this connection really say? This connection say, hey, you cannot cut this path you cannot cut this path before and the other path later. And you cannot path this path later and this path before, okay? So you think of the sliders and every like connection between two different sliders is like a connection saying, hey, actually you cannot cut this one earlier and this one later. Yeah, because that would be like a forbidden connection between S and T. So this is actually like um, constraints saying like slider one, is it's not true that slider one is earlier than some A and slider two, two is later than some B. Okay? It's, not, it's not true that something's earlier and something's later. Yeah, these are this type of constraint. And it's actually like an easy exercise that an instance when you have got like a bunch of variables that are sliders that can have got like large ordered domain like integers from one to K or, or one to N or something like that. And you have a constraint saying, this guy cannot be at the same time smaller than something, and this guy cannot be at the same time larger than something. Like this type binary constraints, like forbidding the variables to be at the same time something smaller and something larger, or something smaller and something smaller. This is actually a polynomial time solvable problem. So this can be easily reduced to two sub problem. So this is actually like this becomes not a polynomial time solvable problem. So once you do some branching that filters out like which flow paths contain single edge, which flow paths are coupled with which flow paths, then you actually get this type of actually essentially two sub instance that you can solve in polynomial time. That was sketchy, I know, but that was like my sense to say that actually coupled mean cut, if you have got S and T and you know that this is a mean cut, it actually helps the problem. This is not the entire algorithm for coupled mean cut because in coupled mean cut, the solution is not necessarily a minimal cut between S and T. So that's the problem because the flow augmentation I posted you uh, says about minim minimal cuts and the cut is not an ST cut. It's it can actually in coupled mean cut cut away some other parts from the graph from S just to satisfy this constraint that two edges from pair cannot be on the S reachable from S side. So you need some extra quite non-trivial color coding step to guess what also goes to S. And this is actually something non-trivial that I don't want to show now because I'm running out of time and this is actually an, another story how to do it. But I wanted to highlight you that actually the, the how the flow, I want to highlight the intuition why the flow augmentation may help. Uh, with coupled mean cut as well. So let me conclude with the main open problem that of the that I want to have the same statement in directed graphs or a very similar set in directed graphs. And I strongly believe that this is true because if such a statement were true in directed graphs, then it will prove show FPT algorithms for a few problems we suspect they're FPT but they're open. At the same time, we know we are not aware of any problem that's known to be W and hard, but such technique which get dangerously close into actually providing an FPT algorithm to them. Yeah. So in a sense, if this algorithm were to exist in directed graphs, it would explain tractability of a number of problems that are currently open. At the same time, doesn't seem to be able to get close to provide an FPT algorithm for a problem that we know is W and hard. It seems like a perfectly fitting puzzle into our boundary of knowledge, like to actually perfectly fitting the gray area to like make uh, this gray area is actually FPT. So that's why I, I would say the I conjecture that this the, there exists an analog in directed graphs, but there are a lot of problems in the 
proof, I mean, the, or the flow augmentation technique that I don't know how to solve in directed graphs. And I think that's it. Thank you for listening and I welcome any questions. Thank you for the talk. And uh, yes, we are open for questions. If anyone has questions, they can just unmute themselves and ask away. Or if you prefer, you can type in a chat. Hi, I, I have a question. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so you reduced this uh, coupled uh, main cut to a special kind of a CSP. And that CSP seems to be more general than the, uh, you know, coupled main cut. Is that also SPT by your result? Mm, I don't think I reduced it to something more general. I said, I mean, there's this some, if you are asking about this slide, then on this slide, I have got this, this strong uh, structure that, um, this strong structure that like, this guy's on the, like, there's this aluminum cut, and I'm really reducing it to, the CSP, which is not the binary one. I'm reducing it to the CSP, where I have got mm -hmm. variables, call it Y1 up to, I don't know, YK, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, and every ver is like from one to N, and I, have mm -hmm. got, and I have got constraints saying like YI is smaller than some A, or YJ is larger than B, and the equ equality can be in both directions, yeah? Or this, these are the clauses. Yeah, or or this one. these are the clauses, and this is a polynomial time solvable thing. This is actually like this is something very different than the coupled mean cut because like the domains are large, and and this is actually a polynomial time solvable. This is something that I mean, you can. It's not hard to make it a two sat, and it's also it make two it two sat. But you can also, if you know more from CSP world, you can see that it has got the majority polymorphism. So it's like quite simple. Uh, uh, no, uh, this is not. I'm talking about. Okay, you mentioned. You know, three CSPs, right? One, one is like the equalities and coupled and coupled with, you know, this constraint. Mm -hmm. And one is W1 hard, one is poly time, and one is a gray zone. Mm -hmm. There is a slide like that, right? Yes. Uh, I can try to find what is actually. Yeah? Okay, go ahead. Uh, okay. So there you mentioned, like, okay, this, your, this problem, like a coupled main cut can be encoded as a CSP in that, you know, the middle one, uh, like there are three. It's actually the same. The CSP, the CSP is actually the same as coupled mean cut. I mean, you can also get uh, this, uh, the CSP one and then code it as a graph and get coupled mean cut. But in the coupled mean cut, it is just a partition. In the CSP, you can have not just partition, right? For that R constraint. But I'm not, I think it's, I think in the, I mean, I think I just encode it as a graph. I mean, the graph allows single edges, which are just equalities, and allows pairs of edges, which are just ca these couples. I think this is a direct translation. I think I don't understand what you're saying. I think okay, so, exactly so you're same. saying like those CSPs can also be translated into some coupled domain cut? Yes. The, the other direction? Okay. Yes, I'm saying that this is exactly the same problem, just expressed in two different languages. Okay, I see. Okay, any other problem, questions? Okay, if not, thanks. Any more questions? All right then, seems not. All right, thank you once again for the great talk. It was thank you very much. Very nice to have you. So we wrap up our session here today and we meet again next week at the same time. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.